but you may have a smile in there, right? Somewhere? The Veterans Portrait Project started for me as a way to prove to myself that I was worthy of something still. We're going to take a couple, so bear with me here. As a combat photographer, I was a photographer to document them, but you know, inherently I became part of the story too. So I tried to kind of show or convey my emotions through my pictures too, and in some way by use of light or shadows or any sort of emotion I could. It was one night, we were out with a unit and an improvised explosive device went off and pretty much destroyed the striker in front of us and we were ambushed. Stacy earned a bronze star for heroic action under fire, but she also sustained serious injuries, injuries that abruptly halted her military career. It was a really painful time and I did not want to admit defeat because <laughs> I had been fighting my whole career, literally and figuratively. I really relied on, during my recovery, keeping busy and, and showing myself that because the military said I couldn't do photography for them anymore did not mean I could not do it for myself. It was during her recovery at the VA hospital that Stacy was suddenly hit with an idea. I was sitting there for many hours waiting for my appointments and talking and speaking with many of the other veterans. Just hearing their stories, a little bit about them and uh, their time in service. And I thought, well, maybe I could start bringing my camera and making portraits of them. Can I make your picture today? And over the course of the year, I ended up getting about 300 portraits. I'm going to fix you up, OK? You go a tie up just a hair. Tilt your forehead that way just a hair. Good. And I want you to look right here on the top of the camera. You like it? That's how it kind of flourished from there. I got to meet a lot of veterans with some extraordinary stories. Some like this gentleman, Mickey Dorsey, who was part of the liberation of a concentration camp. Somebody like Maria, who's been to Afghanistan and Iraq. Or somebody like Joe, who's a Vietnam vet. And I thought, if I can't be a combat photographer, then maybe I can at least share their stories because they're so extraordinary. I mean, I still kind of like to think of it as each individual portrait being a, a tribute to each singular person and not just veterans at large. I went up to have the picture made, and initially I wasn't really sure what would become of that. And then later, when they were posting the pictures on the wall, it dawned on me that, wow, you know, this is going to be a permanent exhibit. I'm there with a whole bunch of people that have uh, with backgrounds from all sorts of walks of life that have served their country and served here at the VA. I think the faces of veterans are changing. We associate veterans with maybe our grandfathers from Korea or even our fathers and uncles from Vietnam, but I think of the military as sort of a slice of America at large with so many cultures and so much diversity and that's what I really wanted to share with everybody. Now you have a beautiful smile. I want to get that going on. There we go. That's beautiful. Good. If I have one message is to never focus on the things that people tell you you can't do, but rather the ones you still can accomplish. I like that one actually. It's really cute. Yeah, that's nice. While I didn't anticipate it becoming a way of giving back, it's kind of funny how things evolve. I would like to give back to veterans because we're all brothers and sisters sharing in the same sorority and fraternity, which is the military, and there are no boundaries or borders or zip codes when it comes to that. <laughs>